Hi everybody, welcome back to the Painting Channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little landscape for you with a couple of washes involved. So let's roll that intro. Let's see how we get on. Everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I'm actually doing a lovely little winter scene for you today, and it does involve a couple of washes in the creation of the work. Now, before you write in and tell me, well, it's springtime, Paul. What the heck are you doing doing a snow scene uh, in the in the start of spring? There is a very very good reason for that, and this video should have come out to you guys way back in December. It was made as a sequel to one that I put out in November last year all about watercolour washes, what to do and what not to do. And this was meant to have followed it because it was putting all of those thoughts and ideas into an actual painting and seeing how that process really unfolded. For one reason or another, it never made it. And I felt that I really wanted this to come out to you now. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, I'll put the link to it. I think that's the right shoulder. I put the link to it up there. Take a look at that one if you haven't seen it already and then watch this one afterwards and it all, I hope, will make sense. So without further ado, let's crack on, let's get on with it and I'll catch each and every one of you at the other end. Take care. Right, I'm using a bigger brush and this is that one inch filbert that I've got from Rosemary and it's the Red Dot series. And I'm going to come in with a very pale, I've got a little bit of blue there. I don't want too much of it, just a little bit of that blue. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of my Indian yellow, just a little bit to it. Very green, turned it very, very green. So I'm going to add in a little bit of the red. Still the wrong color. Okay, let's come back to cadmium yellow. We're getting there. We're starting to see where we want to be. If you're unsure, then take an odd piece of paper and just test your color. That's very, very pale, but it's something along the lines what, that I was looking for. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to sweep that all the way through here. Nice, warm wash, a bit more water. Just bring that all the way down through, keeping there's a hair on there, keeping that nice and fluid. That bead is quite essential like that keep that wet on that lovely surface you see how having a much larger brush really does help you should have mixed up more color I'm a victim of my own not listening to my own advice taking it all the way down struggling a little bit can add a bit more water and remix very, very quickly. A bit of red. That's getting very warm down through here, so I actually want to use a little bit more color as we come this way. Down towards the horizon line, the sun is setting. It's late afternoon. Now I will change to a slightly Blue or color. I'm going to use a bit of indigo, just a tap into there. I'm going to bring that through that area there. Nice wash coming all the way down through. Now I'm going to go into some more blue and some indigo together. And I want to use a little tap of magenta. And then I'm going to be looking at my lovely evening sky on snow. A bit more blue to that. This is all a wash. And it's going to come all the way down. I'm going to tap in just a little bit more magenta as that comes in to the bottom. There we go. So now is a wash. That will be my landscape set up. I've got my snow. I've got the narrow banding of cloud on the horizon line. And then this will dry up and will give me a base that I can put my heavier cloud over the top. So we're going to wait for this to dry and then we can carry on. OK, so that's pretty much dried off and I don't need that big brush really anymore. But I will not go to a small one either. I'm going to come down to the next one down 
which was that large number uh, 14 round brush and I'm going to start thinking about the sky and the clouds and where I want them to fade off now they're quite heavy up through here but then they actually get further away of course but lighter and then you've got those little glades of light popping through so that's what I'm going to aim for to make that color up I'm going to come in and I'm going to go into this pile going to mix in quite a bit of color now I'm going to use quite a bit of of that lovely indigo I'm going to add into that some magenta and I'm going to come back to my cobalt blue and that gives me quite a big violet color I'm going to add in that a little bit of yellow because what happens with violet is yellow is the complementary and that will create a gray you can see how that color there is quite a rich purple because all we've done is added blues and magenta together give us that lovely purple color as I've added more yellow in if I go in and add in a little bit more just put that down there you can see how that shifts like that I don't actually need this color so I'm going to wipe that away so I don't want to get it in my mix but you can see how you go for a bright violet color you put a little bit of yellow in and it neutralizes it and it gives it a color gray and then if you put too much in you get this sort of very yellow gray color so let's come back in now and we're going to go with this color and put a little bit more blue to it down through here it's just on the two violety side i'm going to bring that in there lots of color mixed up we can come this way add some more blues into that if we wish to so we have quite a bit there to go with and I'm going to add a little bit more water so I can do that now before I put anything on here I'm just going to look just going to see I don't want to put it on and end up with a problem so I'm going to do a second wash over this dry surface almost dry surface all right let's just come in and we're going to put in a little bit more water to make that flow just put in our lovely sky or clouds should I say now I'm going to use a lot of broken brush on this and I'm going to bring that down as I go big large area of dark through here keep that bead alive as it comes down don't let it dry up if you want to have anything softened here very very quickly just soften it off with your brush just gently soften that back like that taking that all the way through there now keeping that flowing keep that bead rolling down like that keep it coming down don't let it dry up on you because once it's done that it's end of game bring that through there okay just going to let that come in with a little of the yellow just a tap a little bit of red just a tap just to warm that off there I, got to, I should have done this a little bit quicker gotta say um so i'm gonna take that down through there i'm gonna soften that off under there adding a little bit more there's a little bit more color going in than the cloud in the photo i don't mind that happening quite like this sort of suggestion i'm towing around a piece of hair there get rid of that quickly just wanted to have this beautiful sort of winter cloud over some snow okay now I've got to work even faster there's a lot of area to cover and there is an argument that I could have gone back in with that stronger brush I'm going to soften that off quickly just through there just dampen that off come back in with another bit more mix indigo a little stronger this time and I'm gonna add in a bit of weight down here to this cloud it's still quite moist so I can get away with it like that okay now we're gonna come in with some more blues bring that in through there 
rotate it all the way down what will be our trees. And that's getting quite yellowish as that goes away. That's gone very green. I don't want that. I'm going to put a little bit of red orange into that. Let's bring that down. So that's too yellow. A bit more blue. A bit more of that magenta back in there. Too much. A bit of indigo into that magenta. See where that takes that. Kind of a bit on the grey side. Not too much of a problem. Maybe a little more blue. And then we're going to come down through there. I've gone a little bit too low, to be quite honest. But never mind. Turn that all the way down. Because we're now going down into our snow field. I hadn't planned on doing that. But what I do want to do is just take some of that back off very very quickly just eat back into some of that color while it's still damp and just soften some of that effect back into there have nice and clean paper nothing worse than just putting paper down and losing it because you've got it very very dirty you just reposition some of that color What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some of these lovely little lights coming through. Just taking some of the dampness on my brush, keeping it dry, the normal, but just enough dampness on it to make everything move, and drag it through that paint like that. Creating these beautiful ideas of light through there. Just soften that mark off through there. That brush. Let's just make some of this happen. It's a little stronger. And like that. Make a little chink there and bring something down there. little bit more on this one would be nice you can just imagine the ray last rays of that sun just making this happen these beautiful soft lines coming through but don't have it too wet if you do that you're going to end up with all sorts of problems okay that's probably all we're going to get i'm going to maybe bring a little bit more of that through just as a stronger indication of that sun. Very different to the photo, I do appreciate. You can see that's a little bit too wet. What I have to do quite fast is just tap that back, really, because it will cause a problem. Nicely. Okay, so we have an effect. We have come back through our colour. Just going to lift a little bit more of that off. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back in and we're going to just do the foreground and hopefully that will be one little landscape complete. Okay, so now we're going to put in a little bit of green field. So I'm going to use some phthalo green little bit of my lovely turquoise color I love this color and I'm going to add a little bit of vermilion to that just to null it down a little bit just take it off its axis bit more of the lovely uh, teal color just trying to make a bit of a, a green that is not really that heavy as a green I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sort of suggest the broken lines of this field running through here lots of grass is running through the field line broken up because you can still see that lovely bit of snow it's 
So I'm using a dry brush technique now. Very, very quickly this is. This is just showing that you do not have to labor for watercolor. You can actually achieve your desired effect very, very quickly. So that broken effect will create a lovely sense of grass and snow, longer grass in the snow, just popping its head through. Let's tap in a little bit more yellow into my green. Just keep it subdued, not too heavy. Just making sure that's just a little, no, it's just way too much. Quickly, act quickly, just kill that down with a bit of blue and a bit of red, yellow. Just trying to suggest a few of those little darker areas within the grass through there. That's just enough. I don't think we need to go too mad with that. It's just to show a break in it Out through there. Just going to take some of that field up this way. My green has changed too much. tree line that's it now we're going to go for a an orange color a dirty color just as some of the fields at the back have just got broken brush again just break that off so that you get a sense of sort of appearing snow poking through those fields same through here just a nice sort of broken bit of dry brush work like that you can imagine those fields loads of snow in the fields and all the way down leaving a lovely faint line of white or the color underneath to suggest that we've got breaks in the field so that will be all we do on there we're going to wait for that to dry right now we're going to mix in some indigo Quite a bit of indigo because we've got a lot to do with that and i'm going to mix into that some neutral tint neutral tint's got quite a redness to it which counters a little bit of that orangey brown color won't hurt so we're going to mix a bit of indigo a little bit of neutral tint to that and a little bit of that orange color just to change it a little bit more test your color like that see where it is Put a little bit more of that color to it. use a little bit of that and we're going to come in first and foremost with some more blue paler lighter and let's just put in our sort of trees in the distance very very quickly and it's all about leaving bits out more than putting stuff in so we get a sense of a very distant set of trees and this will of course dry quite pale and i'm leaving little taps here that you can suggest things going into that space so we're going to come up here now i'm going to run a little contour down through here towards that field very suggestive now i'm actually coming away quite a bit from the original photo but i'm not too worried about that and put in a few darker shapes up through here more trees bigger bigger woodland through there make them sort of tree shaped as best you can not odd and unusual marks and our brain your brain will do the rest i'm going to put a little bit of orange to that i feel that as that comes towards that sun it wouldn't hurt just to have that a little bit warmer I'm not sure if it should be that warm i'm going to take some out come back with the blues that off so it's been a little heavy for the distance okay, I think that'll work that's fine I'll leave it that just wanted a suggestion on that lot of a bit of warmth okay 
Now this side, we're gonna come in with some heavier um, grades of color. But I'm gonna bring that on a little further this way first and foremost, like that. And then we're gonna have a little bit there. We're gonna suggest there's a yet another field through there somewhere coming into this area, something like that. Come down the edge of this field. Again, I've deviated from the source. I'm not really that worried by that. I just want to suggest a whole lot of information going on in the background. And now I'm gonna come in with a sort of scratchy effect with my brush. Taller trees, I could use a bigger brush for this, I think. Just to get this information in quite fast. Not too much water. We don't want to make a big puddle of water pushing anywhere. We just want to have a suggestion of trees, tree forms in this immediate area. And that's going to come down to here, somewhere about there. I'm going to bring that all the way down. We don't want to make two areas, so we're going to come in and keep this as one sort of large area of dark and maybe scratch a little bit of information through there that goes up to that field and that can come down hiding out that lot there now we're going to come in with another layer over this i just wanted to suggest enough to begin with i'm going to come in with a little bit more magenta just to the top on here just to give that a bit of color as that dries drop it all the way through so it does dry up together and doesn't leave a very different look to it okay and maybe a little red on this side you can imagine that just getting a little bit of color glow from the sky and the clouds all the way down do we want to vary the height anywhere? I think we're good enough. And we're going to come down to a smaller brush. I'm going to make another mix of neutral tint and indigo. Lay that down there. A little bit of orange to that too, just to warm that up. Rigger in hand. And I'm just going to plant my trees where I really want them. That one is quite central. So I'm going to come this way a little bit. I like that little highlight there. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to put in our tree just the trunk and outline to start with and I'm gonna come through on which contour on this corner there's a little bit of a dark area in there I'm gonna make that come down to there and we're gonna add in a much bigger tree here something like that bigger trunk to it a little bit more neutral tint would be good just to darken that up a little bit too much water in my brush just be careful of that and we've got a little bit of dark and we've got another little part of twigs and tree stumps going on through there. Got another little line of the field through there. Very gentle scratches, just generally teasing information out. Now I'm just gonna scratch, look at the way I'm using the rigger, just gently scratching almost dry brush. You can thicken your branches up, you can create little lines coming through so you can suggest the branches like that create the canopy in whatever shape and form you wish it to be and you can thicken it or wherever you want that to be open or dense as you feel fit but i think that's quite nice and put a little bit of scratchy growth around this one underneath Maybe a lower branch coming down here just to suggest there are some branches hanging that way. But we have our tree. And I think I want to put in a little bit of scrub around the base just to thicken that area up. It's not in the photo, but I think it would work because of that. And go back to this one. Very similar thing. Just going to come up, dry brush, take the moisture out, take a lot of the paint out and just sort of scratch it in and create your lovely tree. Come 
bit of height. Very, very open growth, this one. And we're going to give that a little bit of depth in that field there, a little bit of deeper contour. Maybe hooking up with this one in this area. Maybe we could put in another bit of line through there, suggesting a field contour again. And um, the little scrappy bits of bush, anything just to create that sense of what's going on out there. Here we can come through with some nice scratchy marks for the rigger and it all breaks up the information. It just gives you a lot of detail very, very quickly. Just maybe a little suggestion of supporting that there and maybe something going up there. Paler would be good. Just take off a little bit of the thing because as this is going away up here, of course, it's getting a lot paler. So let's just put in little bits of information maybe up through there along that hilltop we've got everything we need to do in here we don't need to put too much more but anything that you want to put in you can come this way with a line and create more fields like that so the further away you get the more these become very close together because of the you know the field of or angle of view is becoming diminished all the time and the more you look in the foreground the more you do see just going to come through here with one or two more suggestive marks coming this way cuts a little bit of scrub in the field take that off the page would be nice i think maybe a little bit there too now what I might just do to finish is to just put in, I always like putting in a few birds, <laughs> just coming off center, just rising up out of somewhere. A few crows just going off to their evening um, roost. Just makes it a little bit more interesting, gives a little bit more life, makes it just a little bit more real. There we are. Okay, everybody. Well, we're done and dusted. One subdued wintry landscape made, and I wanted to keep it try and keep it simple. The whole idea was to create a wash, and I did that, and I created a second wash over the top. Now then. We just use simple layering techniques, dry brush as well, just to create this very quick, very simple wintry landscape. It adds context to the whole thing, but the whole idea was to take all of those uh, initial mistake ones, the bits that I showed you how to sort of get out of trouble and watch for those, the color and clouds, all these sorts of things help you to create um, lovely washes in your watercolors for the future now the thing is that is not the whole story when it comes to creating a wash but it is at least a start and i do hope that it helps you uh, moving forward in your own work that you grab something from it that you can utilize and and make good in your own work but the biggest thing of all is all the scraps of paper that you create turn them over and create more just keep practicing the more you create these washes, the more you get the mixes and the water right, the better it's going to be for you and the more confident you'll become when it comes to doing a larger piece of paper. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Don't forget the references there to use on this one. Have a go at it. Put your versions up on the community page. Love to see them. Any help you need, please ask away. And I'll catch each and every one of you in the very next video very soon. Take care. All the best. Stay safe. Happy painting. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. I had so much fun doing that. Then again, I always do. It doesn't matter whether I'm filming or just painting. I really love just to create. And I'm sure you got something from this. And don't forget, the reference for this video will be up on my Patreon for you to download. And download for free. You don't need to be a patron to do that. But download it. Use it to learn from and then put your versions over on the new Facebook page, Painting with Paul Apps. I'd love to see them there in due course. 
And while I'm on that subject, there are tons of references on my Patreon that are free to download and use to learn from to go along with many other of the videos that are already sitting here on YouTube. So go check them out. And while you're there, why don't you check out the Patreon too? There is so much on offer. There is a community page that is dedicated to my patrons. The patronage is growing and I want to thank each and every one of my patrons old and those that have just come on board recently. Thank you so much for your support, guys, because without you, it would be so much harder for me to create the content that I do week in, week out. So you are very much valued and I appreciate every one of you. And uh, on top of that, I have been badgered into creating a pure oil tier. Now, there is tons for my watercolors and that will continue to grow without any worry at all. But in addition to that, I'm putting a lot of work into my oil channel tier. So if you're an oil painter, great, get involved. There's so much there for you to do and it's going to be growing uh, a lot as well. And it only costs you $6 a month. So it's well worth getting involved with. And for those of you who really like to paint in watercolor and in oils, I've actually made a deal for you. Because there's another chat, uh, there is another tier that is just $14 and it gives you the best of the watercolor and all the oil for a reduced price. So you might want to get involved with that too. So I'd love to invite you on and see you there as my most recent patron. That'd be awesome. Thank you. And if you've got this for the video and you've enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, cl please click the subscribe button, the notification bell and the bell icon, all of those things. All of those interactions tell YouTube and the algorithms that run YouTube that it is a channel that is worth promoting. And when you do that sort of interaction, I, it helps me grow, it helps my channel grow, supports the channel, and it reaches so many more people out there who are like you trying to learn to paint and they don't know anything about me at the moment, but with your help, they will, and it gets spread and the word gets spread. So that would be fantastic. And please comment on this one as well. That would be awesome as well. I keep saying awesome, but it is. It'd be fantastic. Anyway, I am rambling on now. So I'm going to wish each and every one of you all the best in your painting. Have fun with it. Stay safe wherever you are. I catch each and every one of you next Friday at 3 p.m. Take care. Bye bye. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. As I said at the start, this is a concluding part of. Start again then. <laughs> mm hmm. Hi guys, done that bit. Now, as long as you're learning from, and no, start that again. And I enjoy having a brush in my hand and using oils, watercolors, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But I do have, as well. Now, as I said at the start, that the reference will be, I didn't say it at the start, did I? That was last week. Hey okay, everybody, I... Hi everybody, no, not good.